Welcome to the NCLEX success tutorial on cardiovascular disorders in pediatrics. These disorders can be congenital, meaning present at birth or acquired later in life. Studying for the NCLEX exam requires a comprehensive understanding of pediatric cardiovascular disorders, including their pathophysiology, clinical manifestations, diagnostic procedures, treatments, and nursing interventions. Below is an overview of some key pediatric cardiovascular disorders commonly encountered on the NCLEX exam. Congenital heart defects, CHDs, acquired heart diseases, and others. Let's look at the congenital heart defects. Increased pulmonary blood flow is a characteristic feature seen in certain congenital heart defects, CHDs, such as atrial septal defect, ASD, ventricular septal defect, VSD, and patent ductus arteriosus, PDA. Here's an overview of each defect, including their description, symptoms, diagnosis, medical and surgical treatment options, and nursing management considerations. Atrial septal defect, ASD. Description. An ASD is a hole in the atrial septum, the wall separating the upper chambers of the heart, allowing blood to flow from the left atrium to the right atrium, leading to increased pulmonary blood flow. Symptoms. Many small ASDs may be asymptomatic and discovered incidentally. Symptoms can include fatigue, dyspnea on exertion, palpitations, recurrent respiratory infections, and in severe cases, pulmonary hypertension. Diagnosis. Physical examination may reveal a wide, fixed split-second heart sound, S2, and a systolic ejection murmur. Echocardiography is the primary diagnostic tool, showing the presence, size, and location of the defect. Medical treatment. Medications are generally not needed for isolated ASDs without significant symptoms. Antibiotic prophylaxis may be required for certain dental or surgical procedures to prevent infective endocarditis. Surgical treatment. Surgical closure with patch repair or transcatheter closure using a device inserted through a catheter in the heart. Nursing management. Monitor for signs of heart failure, pulmonary hypertension, and arrhythmias. Educate patients and families about the condition, treatment options, and follow-up care. Ventricular septal defect, VSD. Description. A VSD is a hole in the ventricular septum, the wall between the lower chambers of the heart, causing increased blood flow from the left ventricle to the right ventricle and then to the lungs. Symptoms. Small VSDs may be asymptomatic, while larger defects can lead to symptoms such as poor feeding, failure to thrive, frequent respiratory infections, and a loud, harsh, hollow systolic murmur. Diagnosis. Physical examination may reveal a palpable thrill and a loud, harsh, hollow systolic murmur at the left sternal border. Echocardiography confirms the diagnosis and assesses the size and location of the defect. Medical treatment. Small VSDs may not require treatment other than monitoring. Larger VSDs causing significant symptoms or complications may need diuretics, inotropic agents, and careful management of heart failure. Surgical treatment. Surgical closure with patch repair or transcatheter closure using devices inserted through catheters. Nursing management. Monitor for signs of heart failure, respiratory distress, and development of pulmonary hypertension. Provide education about the condition, medication management, and follow-up care. Patent ductus arteriosus, PDA. Description. PDA is the failure of the ductus arteriosus, a fetal blood vessel connecting the pulmonary artery and the aorta, to close after birth, leading to increased blood flow from the aorta to the pulmonary artery. Symptoms. Symptoms can include a continuous machinery-like murmur, widened pulse pressure, bounding pulses, respiratory distress, poor feeding, and in severe cases, heart failure. Diagnosis. Physical examination may reveal a continuous murmur heard best at the left upper sternal border. Echocardiography confirms the diagnosis and assesses the size and hemodynamic significance of the PDA. Medical treatment. Indomethacin or ibuprofen may be used to promote ductal closure in premature infants with a significant PDA. Diuretics and other medications may be necessary for managing heart failure symptoms. Surgical treatment. Transcatheter closure using devices inserted through catheters or surgical ligation of the PDA. Nursing management. Monitor for signs of heart failure, respiratory distress, and complications such as pulmonary hypertension. Educate families about the condition, medication administration, signs of worsening symptoms, and follow-up care. Let's discuss decreased pulmonary blood flow in congenital heart defects, specifically tetralogy of phthalate, TOF, 
and tricuspid atresia. Tetralogy of Follett Description TOF is a complex congenital heart defect characterized by formary abnormalities, pulmonary stenosis, ventricular septal defect, VSD, overriding aorta, and right ventricular hypertrophy. These anomalies lead to decreased pulmonary blood flow and mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Symptoms Cyanosis, bluish discoloration of the skin and mucous membranes, is a hallmark symptom due to decreased pulmonary blood flow and right-to-left shunting. Tet spells, or episodes of hypoxia and cyanosis during crying, feeding, or exertion. Clubbing of fingers and toes, poor weight gain, dyspnea on exertion, and fatigue. Diagnosis. Physical examination may reveal cyanosis, a harsh systolic murmur over the left sternal border, and a single loud second heart sound, S2. Echocardiography is essential for confirming the diagnosis, assessing the severity of pulmonary stenosis, and evaluating cardiac function. Medical treatment. Management includes providing supplemental oxygen during TET spells to alleviate hypoxia. Medications such as beta blockers, e propranolol, may be used to reduce the frequency and severity of TET spells. Surgical treatment. Complete surgical repair involves correcting the pulmonary stenosis, closing the VSD, and repositioning the overriding aorta. Palliative procedures like a blalock tau shunt may be performed initially to improve pulmonary blood flow in severe cases. Nursing management, monitor oxygen saturation, signs of cyanosis, and frequency of TET spells. Educate parents on recognizing and managing TET spells at home, including positioning the child to reduce cyanosis. Provide emotional support to the family and facilitate communication with the healthcare team. Tricuspid atresia. Description. Tricuspid atresia is a congenital heart defect where the tricuspid valve is either absent or abnormally developed, resulting in the inability of blood to flow from the right atrium to the right ventricle. This leads to reduced pulmonary blood flow and mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Symptoms. Cyanosis is prominent due to decreased pulmonary blood flow and right-to-left shunting through atrial septal defects or patent foramen ovale. Respiratory distress, poor feeding, clubbing of fingers and toes, and signs of heart failure may also be present. Diagnosis. Physical examination may reveal cyanosis, a single loud S2, and signs of heart failure. Echocardiography confirms tricuspid atresia. Medical treatment. Management focuses on improving oxygenation through supplemental oxygen and maintaining cardiac function with medications like diuretics and inotropic agents. Prostaglandin E1, PGE1, infusion may be needed to keep the ductus arteriosus open in critical cases. Surgical treatment. Staged surgical procedures are typically performed to reroute blood flow and improve pulmonary circulation. The Fontan procedure is the final stage, creating a direct connection between the systemic venous circulation and the pulmonary arteries. Nursing management, monitor oxygen saturation, signs of cyanosis, respiratory status, and fluid balance.